We are here in Nashville and we're doing a base clinic and we have a lean, hard, solid group of music loving people into learning, I'm hoping. Uh, playing is a beautiful thing, but you don't, I think, need my help or nor anybody's help to play. Uh, I'm inviting people to ask questions on the air too, right? You'll be able to uh, yeah. get, get yep. to them. Yep. And I'll also ask you guys to come up and demo with me. And reason being is, is that what I want from this group is when, when you guys leave is that you think differently. Uh, I think that would be a positive thing. Um, I'm a little bit uh, into uh, my vision of bass and how it should be taught because of my background. I kind of noticed, not as a bass player, because there's bass players today that are just unbelievable, beyond anything I could have ever physically uh, uh, done in terms of, of playing. Hadrian Farad is the first guy I would think of. But where I'm unique is, is I don't think there's any bass player with my pedigree of training. And what that means is, I don't believe that there is any electric bass player in the contemporary scene. I'm 64, so I started at five years old as a serious, when I say serious, I mean taught the way music was always taught, which is uh, no art, no feel, no self-expression, the things that I think many bass players are privy to today, that you have to be yourself and you have to, and they're popular, so I, concepts, so you gotta talk about this with me. And where I'm unique, I feel, is that I was taught that this note has a meaning. And this note is called G, and here it is on a violin, and I squeak the, the, the note G. And the very first lesson at five, I mean, there were kids that started at three, you know. It wasn't uncommon, maybe it isn't now, I don't know, but they would put music, they put music, and there's a G, and I went, ah, and I looked at this thing, you know, that's G. What did I get out of it? What I got was the very first introduction to the fact of music, that's all. Music is factual. It's a narrow principle. The letter B in English really only functions one, possibly two ways. I don't know what the second way is. Um, grammar language is fairly narrow. A verb is a verb. That's really what it is. And lucky for us that it is, because we can use it and, and, ex and express ourselves. So what me as a bass player is having the 10 years of violin in a, a serious manner, a serious training, that's how we were taught. And serious means is they didn't accommodate me. What do you want to do? What do you feel like doing? What's your thing? Uh, the right teacher for me was any violin teacher of that period on Long Island, New York. Because they were all trained in the same principles and they could all teach us the same, which is the facts of music, not the art of it. So that's what I use here when I talk to bass players or meet musicians here is that no matter what you want to play, there's really only one or so valid ways to learn. And, and I'll invite you to share if you think that there aren't. I want you to be honest. I want you to discuss, excuse me, contrary points of view if something I say, say doesn't smite well. And this is uh, uh, important that you don't buy into what I say today. I'm gonna to try to prove it and try to back it up and, and discuss things. So my thing was that. I came from 10 years of violin. I, get, I became a self-taught bass player, went into rock, and then I went to Berkeley at the time when Berkeley only taught music. At that time in music history, Berkeley didn't attend to things that were anything other than this is a major sound and this is what you do with it. This is a minor sound. This is arranging principles. This is Herb Pomeroy's line writing. Your bass lesson is you'll learn these etudes. Uh, the ear training class was based in harmony and music, and it was successful enough where, I mean, in my class alone, my class alone was Vinnie Kaliuta, uh, John Schofield, Mike Stern, Steve Smith, the drummer from Journey, uh, 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 Joe Lovano, uh, Richard Niles. Um, I'm trying to go through the list. It was like uh, Abe Laboriel was a graduate. Um, of, uh, who else? Uh, Neil Steubenhaus, who's the top studio guy in LA. I have to think that there were more. There were a lot more. And there, and we all went through that period where music only was mandatory to make us into understanding how music worked. Uh, we were not allowed to decide for ourselves. And thank God we weren't. Because when, if I was allowed to decide what I wanted to study, 
with whom I wish to study at a time when I wasn't qualified to. You, you make those choices later. But when I was told what to do, it took the weight off of me to be responsible for its outcome. I trusted that somebody said do this, but that doesn't seem to be the case these days. So my thing is, is that I want to be the guy. I heard that, um, it's cool. <laughs> Oh, I got you. Hi. Hey, yeah, okay. So um, <laughs> I'm getting a coach guidance because my therapy doesn't always work. So, <laughs> so, um, so my thing is, is that in my ability, as uh, from all that I've learned, I've come to understand that I can teach anybody, anywhere, anytime, at any moment, in any case, in any manner. That I'm the right teacher, and somebody like me is the right teacher for everybody that I feel there's a right teacher, for the most part, doesn't exist. Except if you're such a high level that uh, I think uh, uh, George Gershwin went to Europe to study with, uh, who is it, uh, Debussy, not Debussy, uh, the other French guy, uh, Debussy and, uh, come on, who, who am I thinking of? Debussy, it's always, there's two, two, two French guys. Sati. Not Sati, the other famous guy. There's two French great Impressionist composers, and I'm blanking on the one I want to mention. Bizet? Not Bizet. I can't believe I'm blanking on <laughs> Ask the Facebook Live people to Google it real quick. <laughs> Who am I thinking of? Google it. Uh, Chopin? Chopin was Polish. Polish um, yeah. uh, uh, Google it. B uh, Debussy and. I can't believe it. <laughs> it's like blanking on, on Obama's name or something. Ravel. Who? Ravel. Ravel. Oh, Ravel. Thank you. Ravel. Ravel. That's it. Yeah, don't look. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and he went to study with Ravel. So that's the specific thing where he's the right teacher for the right guy because Ravel had a certain particular thing that was unique to him in his art. But he studied the same way as everybody studied when he was younger. So that's the nature of my clinic, and that's what I'll show today, and that's what I'll demonstrate today, is that learning isn't special. It's unspecial, it's factual. In fact, the best learning is, in my opinion, is Simon Says. Simon Says, play minor. Fifth, I heard it last night. We heard it. Yeah, you want to you want to watch Beethoven? I'd rather sleep, Jeff. Can I go to sleep? But but listen to, to Beethoven's fifth. Okay, listen to Beethoven's fifth. Living with a musician. Isn't that great? It's great. I love the arpeggio. Great. His use of notes. So the, in that paradigm, learning is specific, unremarkable, and factual. And if everybody has an interest to improve. If you could attend to that, you're going to double your playing this month, you know, or triple in, in a three, four months. Music will make you better by the factual nature of it, and uh, the performance element of things uh, will come to you. I don't think you have to study groove, feel, art, heart, emotion, spirit, guidance, love, and, and these things, because I think you already love music so much that you'll attend to it anyway. So it seems a redundancy to go to do something that already you, you're inspired. You went and bought a bass. I mean, you didn't, it's not a small thing. Or this young lady bought a guitar or a mandolin. You did the purchase out of a need to know something out of this instrument. Am I speaking for every man and woman in this room? Every last one of us. That when we choose the thing, we choose it out of love. Man, I want to do that thing. And the funny thing is the minute we get that guitar, that's with a line drawn and you guys don't go further. A lot of guys don't. Where the the, the 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 involvement in is an anathema to bass players and i'm curious to know why so maybe you guys can help me because is this art no it's fact so here let's look at it this way when we learned english as kids in school how were we fact how are we artistically expressive in our use of english you know when we 
uh, hello mother, I'm going to the store. Did you learn about it like that? Did you have Spot and Dick and Jane as kids in, 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 in first grade or second grade? You know, those are the characters that I used uh, that were taught to me. Dick says to his sister Jane and, and mother and father, and Spot was the dog. Where's the art in that? Where's the expressive, beautiful emoting in that kind of study? There isn't any. So if there isn't any, what was the point? It factualized English to the point that we all learn English pretty much the same way. If you think about this, we all learn it the same way. We all learn the same essays, the same principles, because the syllabus was fairly narrow, narrow. This is what children need to learn. Now, as adults, you can go online and express beautifully your individual thoughts. You can discuss with me opinions. Uh, Trump said this, Obama did that, Clinton did this. Climate change is real, it isn't real, blah, blah, blah. All the things that we wish. Yes, dear? Yeah, I was wondering if you could, since I know you've got your five, your five lesson packages now, which I think take you from the factual to the, to the art, I won't say artistic, but certainly with the approach notes. If you could give us maybe a brief description or a brief demonstration of exactly how you're interpreting that factuality sure. in, your, in your actual lesson. Sure, okay. Um, I'll give a two-point uh, uh, interpretation, which is, uh, s s s where's Dwayne? There, there, where is he? Sing a bass line, anything. Don't worry about the key, don't worry about the time, don't worry about, just sing blobbity blobbity bloopity. It doesn't have to be a creative thing. Sing anything. Okay. Now that's pretty much what he's saying, right? Now, how would I be able to make real the notes? Because I academically learned music to where the artful interpretation is the natural result of that. Because if I ask one of you guys to uh, do that, in fact, uh, I need a bass player. Would one of you guys come up that's sort of a self-taught guy or, or um, not Dwayne though? Would you like to? Tell me your name. Bill, come on up, Bill. If you don't mind, we'll use this as a chair. Uh, let's see. Uh, you can hop up here or go there, whichever is most convenient. Alrighty, thanks, Bill. Take the bass. And uh, this is Bill. Why would I lie? <laughs> okay, Bill. Are you a self-taught guy? Are you a studied bassist? Well, I've had two lessons before. Okay. I'll just do this as a. I've had uh, one lesson this morning. Yeah. No, yesterday morning. I found something on, on the internet, a line, and I was working on it for about 10 minutes. Uh, uh, it was, uh, I can't remember the teacher's name, but uh, he used the, uh, when the saints go marching in, and he used this particular way, and I was blown away by it. So I had a lesson yesterday. The only two lessons I've ever had were from you. In person, did we hang? Well, how long ago well, was I came, came to the first one week intensive. And oh, you came so to the one weeker? Yeah, and then I had to come back again. I did so bad. Yeah. You did badly? <laughs> well, there, that's a positive, and I'll tell you why in a minute. <laughs> Doing badly is motion. You know what I mean? Because if you didn't do badly, you would probably cruise here. So even this denotes motion to ascend further. So, well, you know, and I'm not being just philosophical. Sometimes you have to go down before one can ascend. So, all righty. Uh, uh, Gabby, sing a, a simple little melody, just anything. Don't even worry about it. Now listen carefully to what she sings. Can you play that? Close, wasn't it? Close. And he was close too. Anybody? That's great ear. ba boo do ba da that's okay. That's okay. This is this is the demonstration here. Ba bu da ba ba. Yes. Now, th this little hitch, little fumble, it's it doesn't mean anything. Uh, 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 sing, sing, sing a melody uh, for Bill. All right, sing it again, um, or sing something. Bum, 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 bum. It's close, it's close, it's close. Pitch is a little funny, but you're, you have a good ear, you see? And 
if you now may I borrow the bass one yeah. second? Um, he he. See, that's very good. He got you got the rhythm and you got close to the note. Sing it. Sing the line for me. Now, why would I do that better than Bill? Because I have. See, his ear is evident. That's the natural gift. What I've come to is through the study of fact of music that if I hear something outward, outside and within, I can play it with little difficulty. So the lesson elements that Sarah is mentioning is, is that by specifying... That was my artistic thing. Take the bass and solo. That's okay. Pl play a bass line in, in, in F, any bass line that you want. Just something that can repeat and, and. Oh, well, I'm sorry. That's okay. I'm used to a five Are you used to a five string? <laughs> the notes a little bit. It's oh, okay. It's okay. Uh, it wasn't three. Here's the thing that happened. You got sabotaged by music. And I uh, let me take the bass back. What I wanted to show you is Bill played a beautiful, well, that's a James Brown one, isn't it? factualize learning and any of you factualize learning two things will happen one any creative idea will be much 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 more available and the second thing is anybody who requests anything in the outside will be instantly doable and in a much more musical and, and, and articulate manner because your playing is a little I would call it fluffy is there a wolf in this room I hear a real wolf here the room, the room does. Is that what it is? Okay. See, uh, uh, then we'll tolerate the tone. See, I'll play. Is that the room? You know what? Take me out of the PA. I'm still saying you don't really need that. <laughs> is it done? See, that really that's okay. That's okay. Try it now with this bass tone, and and try this. What I'm trying to show is is that. Bill can do what he does, and any musical suggestion beyond it, as with any of us, is a little bit of a hitch. Is, am I right about that? So what we, what, do you want again? Now, okay. Now, we're gonna clean this up. Hold on one second. I want you to play it slower, and I want you to on purpose be military. Boom. Listen to me. Boom. Bop, bop, bop. Boom. Boom, boom. I want you to be military about it, but light. Don't have to be over uh, hitting okay. it. Much better, right? Now we'll stop. Why is it better? Because he academically approached the line. Interesting, isn't it? It wasn't an artistic thing. And had I not told this to Bill, he might have gone on for a long time, possibly, and not be aware. Right. And that's the beauty and the miracle is that in one little particular, it took me a second to find out where you're at, in one second he was a better bass player, audible for all to see. And it's nothing I did. It specified the line. So I'll take the bass back and invite you to sit down again. And uh, I'll talk a little bit with the guys about what you did. This is Bill. Thank you. Please have me. <laughs> Please marry me, Bill. I got the sweaty diamonds. Why? 
what? You don't like my bass playing? What? What? So what Bill did is he articulated in a mechanical and non-emotional manner and instantly improved. And that's everybody's story, everyone online, everybody in the world. How about that? There isn't a bass player anywhere under any circumstances that won't benefit from a cold-hearted, military, non-emotional approach, which is why I want you guys to read music. What Sarah was referring to are these lesson packages that I've written that start at the beginning from, you know, whole notes for bass players. I'll demonstrate a little bit. But if you don't read, and if you have the, if you have the, oh boy, give me the word. If you are open to recognizing that 15 to 30 minutes a day doesn't compromise anything in your musical life. If Bill practiced, where is he? If Bill practiced everything that I was referring to in this manner, he'll be twice the bass player by, by Monday. See, here's a thing I want to mention. Um, bass players that don't know a lot about music, that are taught a couple of things, are impressed to the point that what they were taught was fantastic. The general, and the, I, I know I go off on this topic and and I'm, I, you know, I want to be positive and loving, but the general attitude in, in, in music in general, in bass, is that when we are taught or guided to, to play our thing, Bill played his thing before I corrected his thing, right? It's beautiful to see in action. So you did a good thing, because you didn't do anything wrong. You played up to the line that you came capable of playing at this point. So what you did was a valuable service to everybody. Bass players that don't know much, so just by my articulating that, he can go out and tell everybody I'm a genius, when I might not be. He could tell everyone, well, this is the greatest approach, whatever, which it might not be. We bass players tend to be swayed by simple things that are so f f familiar, familiar and predictable, there's nothing special about it, except that it falls into the line of how we learn. We learn by factualizing, and we emote by playing what we know. It's two different things. How many ways are there, do you feel, to learn how to play the bass, anybody? I'll give, you, I'll give you my thought, and to everyone online, there's only two ways to learn how to play the bass in the world, only two. Check it out, and invite people to think about this, and see if you can offer a third, because if you can, I'd like to hear it. I, I haven't been able to figure it out. Here's the two ways that I believe everybody learns to play bass, only. One, we're self-taught which everyone in this room is, including me, including me. Learning music doesn't substitute for the self-taught paradigm. Self-taught means you love Hendrix, you love Jocko, you love whomever, you love Victor Wooten, you love uh, 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 Lewis Johnson, you love uh, Slap and, and Rock and, and Getty Lee, and you go into those records and CDs and you listen and you play those things and you're influenced and you're moved by whomever you love. That's the self-taught influence and it works for every one of the names that I just mentioned. The self-taught approach is beautiful it, and it's necessary because everything I'm talking about learning is never meant to substitute. It's to join side by side. That's why I, forgive me, that's why I have a problem with a lot of base education when it teaches the things that we learn through the self-taught paradigm. Self-taught musicians learn feel, they learn groove, they learn heart, they learn emotion, they learn amp tone, bass tone, good sound, bad sound, and they learn it in a rather murky and sometimes slightly dirty environment, meaning the grunge and uncomfortability, is that a word, uncomfortableness, of sounding bad, playing and, I say to Greg, you know, we, that teaches me that the next time that I'm here, I have to work on it. Maybe later I'll get the frequency number. I've learned something. When we sanitize bass in learning, you don't get a chance to get dirty, and hence you don't get a chance to experience what every self-taught bass player in history experienced. By making things neat, and here's a lick I want you to practice, here's a groove I want you to work on, here's a, a lick, here's a, a rock, uh, approach, here's a rock line, transcriptions, or imitate these things. Beautiful things, but you haven't gotten into how all the rock players and all the great musicians did it. How they did it is they got into it and sounded sloppy, dirty, bad. Boy, that sucked. Boy, that's awful. 
That's really okay. bad, but it was necessary. It was necessary for Bill to go down before you could ascend. Do you follow? You may, would do well to do that, and that's what reading music does. Reading, reading music is special, but uh, the self-taught paradigm, I'm all over the map here because I'm always excited when I talk about this stuff. The self-taught paradigm covers everything that you could possibly cover in music, everything whatsoever. There isn't anything left out. Who you jam with, the drummers you love, the bass players you love, the, the, the guitar you buy. Uh, uh, I love this instrument. Next week, I hate this instrument. Boy, use this amp on your gig. I didn't like the tone. Well, I use it again next week. You know what? It's not so bad. You, you, you learn by being in it. And being in it isn't clean and it isn't always sanitary. Follow what I'm saying? Bass is taught sanitary and you are not beneficiaries of it because it kind of says you can't figure this stuff out for yourselves. So the self-taught paradigm is a bumpy, murky, you know, you know, experience through experience. The worst gig of your life could have been the best thing that ever happened to you. Think about it in that way and then you'll be okay with saying this is the greatest cable next week. I don't like the sound that the producers. You know, the cable didn't change. You know what happened? Your ears changed. You changed. That's growth. That's growth. You've grown. Uh, I love this playing this thing. Next week, you know what? I'm not happy with this. What changed? It's the same line. It's the same thing. What changed? You changed. You grew by what you like more and what you like less. It's growth. And that's what self-taught experience gets you. And that's what a lot, that's why I object a lot to the rock element of, of teaching and the things that, you know, that, that are emotional based. The second way we learn, if everything is learned through self-taught playing, what's the second way? You know what it is. From a teacher. Music, musical content. Absolutely musical content. This is major. Is it art? No, but what happens when Paul McCartney went I don't think that's the key, but it's a C triad in his hands and it became Obla di Obla da, or in our national anthem. So there's artful, expressive ways to use it, but learning music factualizes the language and it doesn't take 20 years. I think there's a big misgiving about that. By the way, after I'll give a break and I'll play some bass for you guys. But Learning music doesn't take 15, 20 years. I'm not sure why people think that learning music is so gosh darn awful. But a whole generation, a whole generation, a lot younger than us. I mean, I don't think there's anybody younger than 40 or 35 watching this thing right now. But if I could get the kids, if I could get your children who want to play, I mean, they'll reject me outright, but I'll work on them. You know, Grandpa Berlin here, I'll, I'll work on them and say, yeah, you could rock. You should rock. You should. Now go home and learn your minor seven flat five chord tones. Why? Because it exists. Anyone ever remember the uh, the the, uh, the crash of twenty nine and 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 uh, the Appalachian people in America, uh, uh, devoid of education, and how they couldn't read nor write nor speak and communicate. Even that lack of education affected literally life expectancy somehow that if you can't read or write and you're living at a poverty level and you function in that illiterate manner you are affected in your entirety as a person but when things changed and then the, the you know the appellation that nobody mentions the word hillbilly anymore because everybody in, in in every region of america just about just about is educated to the point where lifestyle and health and function of society is, is greatly raised. Am I wrong? And this is based in the knowledge and function of, of, of fact. Base, reading makes us better people. It helps us live better. It, look, look, look what Trump said today. You know, uh, oh, what, what does that aspirin uh, tell me there? You know, oh, oh, I took two. I should have taken one. Uh, there's so much in terms of what adds to our day. But bass players live like hillbillies in general as musicians. My, is this, okay, okay. So we live like hillbillies because we don't know how the language of music. You've heard the thing about talk about the language of music? The language of music is notes. Everyone communicates, everybody, Bill communicated. Everybody communicates when we play, everybody. But are we communicating our best abilities? Let me play something for you. Is that what I should do now? 
Okay, you guys bored with all my yakking? I'm a dangerous guy with a, with a lavalier <laughs> mic, you know? I'm trying to think, I should improvise something. Uh, what soon, you played the, the, not the James Brown, I need to play, uh, I played this on the internet the other day because it, it just killed me. Did anybody hear this little Beethoven thing I did? You did? <clears throat> you did? There's a thing on the internet of me doing a bass improv of, of, the, of a melody out of the third movement of the ninth symphony. I cannot get enough of Beethoven. My wife gets so mad at me, she's, she was gonna write my friend Phil Mandel and, and say like she, she wished that Jeff would stop with, with Beethoven and let me hear a little Mahler because I can't get enough of Beethoven for about, since I'm four or five, I went insane over his music. Five years old, long before Schroeder and Peanuts. I was fanatical, and even now, I say, Gabby, listen, listen, listen. She's like, that's great, that's great. I can't, in the last two days, I heard the third symphony, the fifth symphony, and the ninth symphony in completion, in two days. Top to bottom, the Barenboim versions. Heartbreaking. So there's a melody that Beethoven, so much about music and take so much time to play and learn that you could hear it and play it. And I played the cello part along with the melody. Do me a favor. Do me a favor. And everybody, do this tonight. I, I, do it at night. It seems to be a nighttime thing. It, you need to be a little bit patient with this. I know it's not your thing, but put on headphones because then you're sitting in the theater. And listen, go to Daniel Barenboim, B-A-R, I think it's E-N-B-O-I-N or N, Barenboim, como se llama? Bom, con M? B-A-R-E-N? B-O- Oh, Baron Bourne? Baron, no. Born. Baron Boyne, right? Born. Okay, Baron Boyne. What do you say? Como? Okay, yeah, if you put it in there. And he, he's an Argentinian uh, musician, 
who is a Palestinian and he has an orchestra and he uses Palestinian, Palestinian and Israeli musicians. He's a Russian, I am too. He's a, he's a descendant of, of Russian Jews, like me too. I'm a descendant of Russian Jews. Russian Jews and Polish Jews. Well, she didn't, she didn't hear the third. And I, I'll let him. Isn't that great, Gary? Now listen how they, oh, I loved every second. It was 4 a.m. What did you say? 4 a.m. 4 a.m. I'm going to sleep. 4 a.m. I had to do it. I, I'll wake up sometime. We get up a little late because I work at night now because I'm, I'm working on a Joe Frazier redo. And, oh, but it's, you. Well, yeah, I know, a third time. But the only way that it's recognizable is by the... It's the only thing in it, but the whole tune is utterly new. And it's maybe the, one of the best rock, funky compositions I ever wrote, I, in my opinion. It's like... Huh? Well, yeah, this is my recital from college, useless. Did you do that? At I, I played it on my, my junior recital. Did you? Um, but the round two, I played it that way. Yeah, the Just round two. Your solo was more difficult than that one. Oh. <laughs> I practice soloing though, and here's the thing, mentioning soloing, you don't have to be soloists, not important. If you want to be a bass player, be a bass player, by all means, soloing is a calling, it's not a, it's not a mandate, so it's like uh, driving isn't a right, it's a, it's a privilege, you know, uh, we have privileges, soloing is, is a mandate, you want to solo, I do, I'm a violinist, ex-violinist, and I came from Melody, so I assume that uh, when you come early, like a lot of people like me, it's in your DNA. You want to be beyond the, the normal structures for an artistic point of view of music. So, but the thing is, is that reading is really great. Now, who, who, who else? I, need, I want another bass player to come up. Uh, anybody else? I'll give you a quick little lesson and discuss some thoughts uh, about it. Anybody who's a bass player want to join me for a second? You two guys, anybody? Anybody bass players? Want to come up and play a little bit? Are you a little nervous? I won't embarrass you. I'm a guitar player that plays a little bass. Well, let me f go for the bass players directly first, and if they uh, check it out, like You're the wusses that they are. Bass player, huh? Academic oh, okay. bass player, yeah. Finally, a bass player would, never mind, I won't get <laughs> I'm, I'm on the line. What's your name? I'm Frank. Frank, hey, grab a bass yeah, friend. Watch, she's a ringer. We've met before. Have we? Yes, we have. All I saw right. you at uh, Thoroughbred Music. Oh, that's a long time ago. Yes. Elliot passed away not long ago, if you remember the honor of this yes, stuff. Yes, yes. Yeah. He was an old friend. You're on the air. Now, here's what we'll do. And um, we'll discuss metronomes and click tracks in a second because it's a popular theme. I happen to have one here. And I know a lot of guys practice with them, so I'd like to demonstrate that in a minute. So uh, play something that is familiar to you. Take your time, it's not a rush, and you can't do wrong, and you're not doing anything bad, or not. just relax, enjoy, and just play something. Uh, take your time. Could you play a little longer? Play your jackal lick and play your lick. Make a couple of comments and you guys tell me if you agree and if you agree. My hand is shaking. Well, I'm sitting here I know <laughs> it's, it's an unfair chair because I know people get nervous and the thing is is that you're not expected to do it. You, you, you can't mess up. You, you, you don't sound bad. Actually, you're a good bass player. Um, there's nothing expected here. So I'm trying not to be nervous with me because to be honest, I do better with newer or less experienced bass players. I don't really like teaching advanced guys because they can take care of themselves. So let me tell you what I didn't hear. Anybody have a thought about that, what we didn't hear? It's Frank? Yes. Frank's a playing. Did you notice what you didn't hear? Anybody on the air? And if you have questions on the air, uh, write them in. And, um, just type them and I can tell. Just type them in and, 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 and uh, Sarah will share them. I didn't hear time. Yeah. Yeah, I was just messing with that. That's so fair. Fun. We have to start somewhere, so you were messing around. So with that in mind, play, now that we've discussed a little bit, play time and, and whatever, you can go to another lick if you wish, or another thought, whatever you wish, or redo that line, or whatever you want. Okay. Now let me borrow the bass. I know that line. Do you guys?
guys know that line? A lot of guys know that line? Now, I'll tell you what I suggest you do is do it slower. Because I still hear you at the top of your technical ability. Now you see how little, I'm, I'm paraphrasing you and exaggerating it a little bit. Sure. But if I can't play, you know, moves up, moves up, moves up, moves up, moves up, moves up, I would go the other way. And, then, and I would tap my fifth foot. I can't talk and play at the same time. Now try that, slow it down just a little bit. And here's a case where you already know the line, but I don't think you've ever articulated it to the point where it's a more surfacey understanding and a kind of a surfacey performance. I want you to get a little more into the mechanical and academic understanding of what it takes to play the line. And if you can't play it here, play it here. You know what I mean? Slow it down so you can. It's a very common thing on the internet. I get them constantly. Uh, they say, well, I'd like to check myself uh, with a metronome, which we will now uh, attend to, the dreaded metronome. And my question is to ask everybody is, what are you checking? Well, if I could play it faster. But you don't want to play it faster because the tempo doesn't represent the in 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 integrity of the music. Why don't you play it slower? Why don't you play it in, you know, in, in another, you know, why don't you swing it? Why don't you, why does it have to be in music that it has to go? Because bass players, I feel erroneously think that speed and technique are the priority in music as a performance. When you realize that there's Jocko, there's uh, uh, Hadrian Farad, there's Stanley Clark, uh, there's 20 guys in the planet that play fast. Am I right, more or less? Let's go to 100. There's this 40, 50,000 bass players on records now all over, the, all over the United States going back years. So, but what these 50 to 100 uh, uh, guys have done is they've affected everybody thinking that they have to get faster and get more technique. You don't get more technique by going faster. You get better technique by going slower and specifying it. Because the more you do that, now you can speed up and not slop it up. Do you follow? Absolutely. There is a thing about that metronome, about that time thing. There's nothing to check. This is the check. Because you're not on a gig, you're not in a studio, you're not in any uh, interactive musical event. This states that I hear and feel a quarter note subdivided here, right? So if I, I talk So let me go faster so I can check myself. But you're not generally gonna play those gigs anyway. Generally, bass players don't play. How many guys here play fast playing gigs or playing fast playing uh, 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 songs? You do, you do. Anybody else? A little bit? Okay. Okay. Uh, then I'm going to invite uh, Dwayne up in a second to play. You see, if you do, are you spe specifying the notes well enough? Because if you were playing this on a fast gig, I would say you want to slow it down so that you know what the notes are better. You have a general understanding. I know you understand it. Bass players, again, I always go to us because I feel that a lot of the information is taking us away from what it really is necessary to learn. I'll never stop thinking that. I'm not stupid. I see what goes on around me and, and it, it shocks me. That's why I did the website, learn music, uh, to learn it and don't be an artist. Be, be an artist on your own time. You don't need me or you don't have to pay me to teach you how to play rock or feel a groove. It just doesn't make sense to me and I'll go back to that, is because 100%, 100%, 100% of all bass players did it on their own. The whole, the whole name uh, uh, faction of bass players, the whole 100%, check this out, 100% of all bass players in history never learned 
that feel or artful performance in an academic setting. Isn't that unreal? So if they didn't, where did they learn it? They were into the dirty, greasy, bumpy, awful, self-taught paradigm. That's where they learned it. That's where everyone loves Jocko, but often people don't pay attention to what he did. He, you, you've heard some of the early records, and he's a little sloppy and a little not quite what we know, because he had his formative years. He didn't just he wasn't just spawned into genius bass playing. He practiced. He did not sound Jocko esque for a while, but he was so unique that it was so outstanding out at the time, you know, because he had this thing. But he was not the guy that we came to know, because you don't hear the fundamental and formative years of guys hiding in a in a in a bedroom, you know, sounding like like Splech, you know, that's a, it's a Yiddish word. I, I just invented it, Splech. It, it doesn't exist, but you got it, right? You got a Splech. Why does he sound like that? Ask me, why does it sound like why does it sound like Splech? Why does it sound like? Don't ask you. <laughs> so. So that, isn't that great? So I mean, that ought to limit and actually get people to, to insist that teachers teach them what they need, which is if you're going to pay a check, you are expected to get a service. Because if I went to a restaurant, we, we go with our partner to uh, a, a, an Italian restaurant that we're particularly fond of. If it didn't do it well, we wouldn't eat there anymore. So why would anybody hire a bass player who can't perform well or provide a service well? The, the service and the thing that we provide is music time and, and, and the experience of you know that. So in rock, it's already stated. I mean, every rock player, 100% learned rock in the self-taught paradigm, 100%. Can anyone think of, uh, and anyone on the internet, contradictory point where they can think of a bass player that didn't, where they learned rock in a school? I'm curious, I mean, there must be some, I mean, Inevitably, somebody mentioned Steve Vai at Berkeley, but he learned guitar and music. They didn't teach rock there at that time. So where do you learn rock? Can anyone name one bass player that you're aware, you know you know the list of names, of anybody that uh, learned rock in an academic setting from the name list? I always go to the name list because they usually represent who people want to become anyway, right? So why go, let's go there instead of going here with us, you know? Let's go to them. Who in the top echelon or the secondary tier echelon learned rock in, a, in an academic setting? And I invite people on the internet to write in. Name me one, two, three guys on earth. And the silence is an indicator because this is the thought. I told you I want you to go and, and, and think about it. All I'm saying is, is you can do rock on your own because it's already proven it can be done. So if you're not gonna learn rock in an academic setting, you're not gonna learn this or that or the other thing, what do you learn in an academic setting? Notes. Now play me the Jocko thing again. That's okay, that's okay. Now I'll stop you. That seemed, and I'll, I don't mind the mistake, I would slow it down. I would. Because I just, if I start playing and I'm hitching around and you're know, not quite getting it, that's my indication that my technique is not quite there. I would slow it down so that I can hear what I sound like at, in, in a perfect 4-4. Four, four. So try it again. Done. He sounded better, did he not? This is Frank. So don't speed up, slow down. A lot of bass players speed up and they play Donna Lee. You've heard a lot of guys play Donna Lee and they play it. And they do. And it's not their fault, but no one's told them, slow down. Ooh, I made a mistake. Made a mistake. Didn't hear that before because I was burning through it. Let me try that again. Ah, there we go. <laughs> ah, what's the next note? Oh, oh. I, I, I know what I'm just trying to paraphrase the experience. And I will bet anything that anybody that learned Donnelly have the patience to learn it like this. So 
how can one play it in the tempo that they want? Because as soon as they start playing Donnelly, they're aiming for the high-end tempo. Why? Because Jocko did it that way. Actually, to Toby, I'm sorry to interrupt, yes, but, but Toby Ellis has a question Hi, from, Toby. from Facebook. So he says, um, do you know all the specific rhythms to that, Jeff, or are you feeling it? Do you see the sheet music rhythm written in your head as you play? On Donnelly? Well, here's a question. When you read a book, do you see the verbs? When you read a book, do you see the adjectives? I'm answering your question. Um, do you see the pronouns? Here's the answer. The learning element is the interpretation of the piece of music as it is only, without going deeper and, and anything. I don't see anything. That's what they talk about muscle memory, which is another word I'm not entirely fond of. But uh, because people go like, I'm trying to develop my muscle memory. No, sir. No, sir. No, sir. Muscle memory is a reward for mental knowledge and, and practice and review. That's what muscle memory is. There's nothing in the hands that requires muscle memory, nor that associative element. It's the redoing. So to answer your question, I don't see anything. But the first time I look at that music, I certainly do. If I looked at music uh, of any kind, the notes say this. It's like reading a new book. So I don't think rhythm and the varieties, it's that piece. Once I feel comfortable with that piece, I move it. I go to the next piece. And I'll learn it for its own thing. That's all. I don't go deeply, deep, unless there's a question. Like, I wonder what happened here. That's rare. Then I learn that and I go on. Then I read the next one. Then I go on. And in all the time I do these things, I do it slowly. And I do not force knowledge in my head or my hands. I cannot tell you, you're beating yourselves up for nothing. For nothing, you're not going to get a reward out of it. If you pull yourselves back. So that's when you get the reward. So to answer your question is, is what I hear and what I do is based on the long-term experience. I'm happy with learning pieces of music every day or every other day, you know what I mean? And I have been. Most bass players have a hard time sitting down learning something that isn't emotionally connected with them and find it meaningless for that reason. And in that thinking, bass players are stuck in a low area of ability and musical understanding, where I'm sort of the so-called hard guy. I'm not a hard guy, I'm a realist. I, I took Bill and Frank, and I didn't beat them up and insult or embarrass them in front of people, and that's not the way. You tell them, and you say, okay, I hear this thing. You know what? You need, here, take this and work on this. I used to get lessons from Charlie Benakis, and Charlie gave me a sheet of paper. I used to wait for it like a Christmas present. That's how excited about Charlie I was. I would get, and he'd send me a, a tape thing up until about the time he passed away. And he'd, he'd get a little envelope and he'd stick, and I have it at the home. And he, my lesson would be a sheet. And it would be like one line and two lines and three, and that's it. And then he'd draw a funny face, and that was my lesson. And every week that man changed my life. I'm even getting emotional thinking about him. That guy was so profound in his knowledge of music. He knew that he could change my life with two triads, something that you guys may not be aware of, C major and B flat. I'm gonna get another bass player up here and I'll show you what this is. I, I like to invite another guy. It's best when I demonstrate with people than even me. Uh, Dwayne, are, are you a reader? That's okay. Um, I'll still invite you to come up. <laughs> okay, so I don't think deeply uh, into the thing, I do a piece and am relaxed in it. And the concept, oh, here's my two triads. Now I'll make some mistakes and show you. Okay, let me play this thing. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. This is, day has been a disaster. Has it been a disaster? Not really. You have to go through the garbage to arrive. You have to go into the mud to find the gold nuggets. So what is necessary, and if you're okay with it, is to sound like, 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 I'm trying not to say a bad word, but you know, to sound bad. You have to be okay with sounding bad. You have to be okay with sounding like splots, which is different than splich. <laughs> splots and splich. Ask me why did, did, is splach a, a, a bad word? Why, why is splach a bad word? Don't ask you, don't want to. So, so how did those two triads change your life? 
Those triads changed my life because they factualized the C scale, whereby people don't know how to solo or play on scales correctly for the most part, bass players. Thank you, Sarah. I need this input. <laughs> people, uh, uh, come on up, uh, Dwayne, for a second, would you? Take a look at this and try this at home. I'll, I'll bet it'll mess you guys up. And messing up is a great thing. It means you've hit a wall. And to get off, you're gonna get around or through the wall. So what? You can still gig tonight and have fun, but work on new stuff. Okay. We, nice, we, we've been nice talking story. on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We've been on the internet it's like you well, said. Welcome to Nashville. I love it here, man. Right? I'm glad you're here. Yeah. Where people are marvelous, and this is, this is a great town. This is a great town. Deeply a great town. Uh, people are very nice here. I mean, it's, it's like, you know how you get on the phone and you know, like you get, hello, this is Affinity, you know, Xfinity, what can I do for you? Uh, in Florida and New York, it's like, it's almost like, what the hell you want, you know? <laughs> and here I get here and I go, and I hear this lovely, you know, oh yes, oh yes, sir, oh, we can help you with this. And I'm like, oh, I don't care. <laughs> They're so nice here. They're just so nice. Everybody's so cool. I'm really maybe <laughs> now do da 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 and articulate the notes cleaner, because you are not yeah. slot 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 specified. Okay. Um, can you play more with all your fingers, or do you just play more or less one or two? No, I play. Scale like. Okay, now I want you to. Oh, you do. Okay. Play me a C7 scale. C dominant 7. Now that's the major 7. Do you know what a dominant 7 scale is? Seven. Yeah. Bravo. Solo on C7. Okay, that is, then, uh, this example isn't going to work. Is there anybody that knows a little bit about melodic bass playing or anything, or, or is it something I need to demonstrate? Then stay here. All right, I'll tell you what we'll do. Play a, the C scale without the note A. Play the scale, the whole C scale, but without the note A. Okay, now he made a mistake. Is that bad? No. Of course not. What if he made the same mistake 10 times, 20 times? Is that a problem? No. no. Excellent. Maybe he needs 20 times. That's the getting into the mud and getting dirty. You, you know, have to mess up 20 times sometimes. Play me the C scale and not play an A. Now, that was the major seven. Can you play me the C seven scale? without the A. Yes, now, it took him a lot longer to play that than a C scale, am I right? Why? I only asked him to take one note out. Why was that harder for, for Dwayne? Because he didn't, he's not used to thinking in notes, in, in melody, in, in, in harmony. It's not his thing, which makes you a perfect candidate for three to six months, you know? It's not like 15 years. I mean, I wouldn't do it if it was gonna take 10 years. It's, it's insane. To take 10 years to play a decent melodic bass line, it could, you could do it in a month, two months. Music isn't that hard. It just is cold, you know, it's, it's the army, man. It's basic, it's boot camp. But in this case, you can stop and go get a coffee if you get a little weary. <laughs> you know, you don't do 20 mile hikes, you don't do, you know, you, you follow what I'm saying? So play your C scale. Now, is that a C scale? Uh, I guess I did say. I guess he's right. I didn't articulate my mistake. Play a C7 scale. Now do it in uh, without the A. Okay, now I want you to play on that scale. Take breaks, but I want you to solo on every note in there, but without an A. But this time, this time it's not metronomic. Now, no metronome. 
So just play boom. the scale. Yeah, and just play around with it in a four four. take the bass back and grab a chair and this will be a part of answering why the two triads. This is Dwayne Say. I'll ask guys if they can play uh, like a C scale and every last one of the guys will go. Am I wrong? You know? Everybody. If I asked and then to play a dominant. Now, if I said don't play an A in that, what? <laughs> it instantly puts a hitch by removing a note. Do you remember when I told Bill to play something in 3 4 and it messed him up? What music does and why I like to sabotage, uh, people sometimes say, why sabotage? And the reason is, is all I want to show people is what they don't know. That's all. It's not an insult. He couldn't play it in 3 4. I got news for you, most guys can't. If I told him to play a bass line and, you know, three, four, four, bum, 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 and ask them on the fly or just to take a minute to go bum, 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 you know, and find a way to do it. Most guys can't do it. Why? Because they have not examined the elements of music. You see, it isn't playing in four, four, three, four that counts. It's expanding the mind the hands, the instrument, and music. And that's by taking a line out. When guys solo on C, you really don't get what I call a real sort of sax players and pianists do. So, and what do we do? Can you hear the difference? That's the beauty and greatness. And this was some years ago Charlie did this, and he gave me varieties of ways to look at this. It got me to specify notes. And when I got to specify notes, I could play specifically. on the bass than maybe me. And the reason is, is because I try stuff all the time. And I'll also rely on a repertoire of things. So I have a, you know, over time you get experience and there's stuff you, my vocabulary is, is broad and I'll make mistakes in the attempt. Tell me the name of a note. B flat. B flat. Another note? A. A. What else? E flat. E flat. Another one? F. Thank mm -hmm. you. 
I'm grunting, I'm looking, I'm searching, because it isn't a record. I won't do that on a record, because those four notes I'm not familiar with in that way. So what you saw from me was, I would say the wall that I asked Bill to expand outward, and Frank, that was my wall, where you guys gave me four notes, and uh, I tried to, whatever, make sense out of it. And if I did, I did. If I didn't, I didn't. I mean, I, I kind of don't care how I sounded, because it only represents me at, at this moment today, you follow? Yeah. But it's still good enough, I think, where if I had calmed down and gone into a studio, I mean, I've done a bunch of little improvs on tape and kept them as they are. And, but here I have an audience, so I'm a little more trying to, well, I want to impress you guys. So I'm not entirely in, in you know, uh, in, in, uh, distant from that. But for the most part, I'm a very relaxed guy up in these things. I play in order to, to, to realize the art, but the art is based in notes. Notes is all that counts, and it always has. Have you guys heard that uh, thing, and I, I mentioned it before, and I think I've done it on a video. Uh, a lot of guys uh, work with uh, uh, click tracks or, or with metronomes. Does anybody here practice with a metronome? Do you? Every day. You do every day? I'm a drummer, though. Are you a drummer? Is there a bass player that practices with a metronome here? I play bass, too. Are you a bass player? Come on. I want to show you something. I have a, an interesting... Uh, um, I, I'm bad at that. I can't. Oh, you can't play? Is there any bass players? If not, I can't demo this thought. It's a shame. Uh, okay. Actually, I, nobody's... You're all bass players. Nobody wants to come up? Guitar player, but I can play bass. Can you? I can't get the bass players. Excuse me, I have to talk to the bass players. Excuse me, gentlemen, ladies. <laughs> 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 Don't you guys want to come up and try something? I'll send Caleb up. Oh, good idea. Caleb is a good bass player. Oh, okay. He, he can come up, so I can't get anybody else. Are you a bass player? Guitar player. Play a bass player? Bass. Are you a bass player? Would you come up and, and try something out? Or are you shy? I won't make you if you don't want to. Come on. He's shy. He's shy. I don't want to force him. Good. What's your name? Josh. Josh. Okay. And, and like the other guys, you know, Whatever you do, whatever you don't do, it's fine. The beautiful thing about being here with me is I have no expectations, meaning there's nothing you have to do, there's nothing, just be Josh. Literally all or that you know or don't know. And, and that's a beautiful place to begin. So play me a bass line that you know, uh, something simple, something you enjoy, something that you know fairly well if you can do something. this thing that bass players perform almost to the point where they can't play well. They're so into the performance that the notion that there's some notes to be represented here isn't 
in the foreground or equal. It's more that, and the reason I say that is because you and other guys, you know, there's a glissy uh, thing, even the expression you have, that whole sort of, I'm getting ready to play. And I would almost, is that the line? Now, uh, I didn't play that with no feeling. I just specified it. And because I specified it, the notes are clearer. And I didn't, you know what I mean? Which you are far from alone on it. So try this and back off a good 30%. <coughs> I won't even put the click on. I'll put the click in a second. As far as speed goes? Well, that, yeah, you remember the, you remember the tempo. So play the tempo and, and, and just back off like that. I'm about to play thing and almost, okay, let me see what I got here. And pay attention to your instrument. Keep in this, this is where your music is. Okay, I'm going to stop you. You know that line, boom, ba da ba da boom, ba da da da. Can you make that as a loop? Yeah. note a D sharp to an E? It's not? I don't know. I, I, I'm trying to go by my memory. Bo ba dum ba da da da. Am I wrong? He was playing it right. He was? Yes. Okay. All right. Let's, let's go with Frank's thought. Do it again and I won't interrupt you. element he followed every single beat and every single change the problem was when he sped it up then he was a little bit unsure am I right about that at the yeah. top part okay here's a little proof uh, I'll take the bass back and you did a great job I'm glad you came up you helped I'll show you how in a minute I'll show you how in a minute Josh represents every bass player watching this and every bass player in the world you all have good time there's nothing wrong with your time you can adjust in time, you, he sped up and slowed down with an instantaneous response to what he heard in terms of a click track. Bass players are funny. They talk about, we gotta be emotional in our music. You gotta play with feeling and you gotta play with that. And then they go home and play with the most unfeeling device on the planet, which is a click. And make sure that they're just right there in the time. It is a, an ironic, and really societal in the bass community uh, 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 self-delusion. And the re time is not based on a click. And what Josh proved, and that's, uh, that, I'm glad I got him instead of somebody else, 
is that anybody here can play with time, even if you never played an instrument before. I've actually had people come up who have never played an instrument and who've played in time. Because time is a fair legacy, unless it's that one odd person perhaps that has, I would say, that one odd person who um, has no time. I mean, you know, it happens. Anyone, anyone ever see me draw? I mean, I just don't have the DNA for, I can't get the vision. I, I tried stuff and, you know, it's like stick figures. I don't have it. Some guys can doodle and they look great. I used to reflect on Adolf Hitler, who, you ever look at his artwork and he never got into that, uh, uh, the art thing, they said he wasn't good enough. I said, he, he was a great painter. If they would put him in, we could have avoided the whole Second World War. <laughs> If they would have let that guy in and helped him out and taught him out of it, and there never would have been a war, and I'd blame the stupid art critics who looked at it. It was beautiful art painting. I mean, he was a lousy dictator, but I've got to give him his creds as a painter. So, um, I'm being a little facetious here. Josh has time and could adjust to a click. So can anybody else. You have no problem with time, and you don't need to. It's up to you. I know I, I've told people this, and of course, they'll, they'll do what they have to do and what they feel is that if they did not have a metronome in their lives and so rigidly adhere to it and so firmly regarded it as a necessary tool, they would still play in time the better their playing got. Because what Josh exhibited to me, where is he? I said, where are we? There he is. Is that Josh needs more of, to learn about notes and the instrument. Because Josh's thing is this performance and the, and the heart and the art. I mean, you can see it. It's a physical, uh, uh, demonstration where, and I've seen a lot of guys, we all do it, I do it too, I'm ready to play, you know. What you don't know, possibly, is a, a lot about music and other f forms of, of harmony and stuff. Am I right about that? I'm studying. Okay, okay, I think that's fine. Can, you should, you, yes, I'm ma sorry, Je uh, actually Toby has a question related to Hi, Toby. Um, just to build on that. Sorry, I don't have my glasses, but I might have good time, but I tend to play ahead of everyone else in my band, ahead of the beat. How would you suggest I fix that? Don't play ahead of everybody. <laughs> the, a lot of these things are not fixable. You, you, you have to assume that you literally have a deficiency somewhere in you whereby you're ahead of the band. I'll submit that your deficiency is lack of music experience and understanding of what's required in the music. People that have experience never or rarely are ahead of bands. People that don't have a lot of playing ability uh, at this juncture, so I'm not saying you don't, but the, the, the knowledge of playing or understanding of bass playing get into bands and wonder why they don't play well. So what happens is a lot of guys, before they actually have the ability to play, are playing. That's not necessarily a bad thing. I think if you share it equally, you can you know, learning, and uh, I mean, everybody starts out jamming in, 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 in groups and, and whatnot. I mean, that, that's part of it. But I suspect that it, you're doing music that you're not either familiar with or that you don't understand the, 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 the credo of an in-time performance, or three, your drummer's behind. I don't know. I just know that you don't have, you do not have a, a deficiency as a bass player whereby your time is, is affected. So the, that leads me to think, and because a lot of guys seem to have this problem, I wish you were here, is that you are not yet the bass player that you can and probably will be who will understand that time is a sitting in, in the quarter note thing. So I feel, and I've seen a lot of guys play, I'll play Sunshine of Your Love, where they're, they're into the line. But you remember earlier I was talking about getting more deeply into it. Now I'm all over the place. But I'm playing Sunshine of Your Love. So what's my problem? My problem is I haven't thought, and this is anti-metronome as there ever was, is that time is what I declare it to be. together. So I'm having agreement with Frank. 
And I trust Frank's quarter note because I know he has one. This young lady does, my wife does, this young lady does. They're all you guys do. So your thing is possibly that you're drummer and you haven't thought more deeply about what the quarter note requires. Write back and, answer, and st let me know if that is a satisfactory answer if I got you right. Tyler? It's Toby, and he, Toby. Says, he says, I wish I were there too. <laughs> I would totally get up there with you, Jeff. Yeah, where are you? Hold well, on, I'm talking he's to Toby. Yeah, he's probably typing furiously yeah. right now. <laughs> I'm talking to Toby, would you give me a minute, please? Thank you. <laughs> Iceland? <laughs> Well, I get him, man. Uh, yeah. I had a student in Iran. He, he would Skype. I loved this guy. Fabulous guy. So into it. He sent me uh, books. and He's a very nice man. I, I get guys from all over the planet kind of writing in. But the honest thing is, now that I'm on the subject, is when I give them homework, usually they disappear. Uh, <laughs> can't imagine that. Can't imagine that. The notion of learning music correctly is an anathema to most bass players. Sorry, I got to lump bass players as bass players. And I'd like it to be differently. That's why music, I, I shouldn't go there. Love, and I'm a high love is a long and slender thing. We used to think that we were kids, we thought it was naughty. Love is a long and slender thing. Yes, please. Observation regarding Toby there. Yeah. Um, I think it's, uh, and I've experienced this myself, it, it depends on how did, how did Toby come to this conclusion? Was it him? him? noticing he's ahead, or is it his drummer telling him that? Toby, did you hear what Frank asked? Uh, to me, that would make a, a big difference. If he notices it himself, that's a really great thing. Yeah. Because it would be easy, it, he knows what he has to do. Yes. Uh, immediately. Um, if, if it's just somebody else telling him, he's right. taking their word for it, they might be wrong. They might, and uh, in the greasy, bumpy, naughty, uncomfortable, occasional element of self-taught paradigm, one day he's gonna say, you know what, I've always had good time. And maybe it was these other guys. So in a sense, I, I like the separation of self-taught from academically learned. And it goes back to that thing that there's only two ways to learn. You learn music or you're self-taught. Mm -hmm. Which seems to me to so clearly depict where base education ought to be. Because everybody here got better once you attended to the notes. That was something that was kind of neat to show here. Yeah, and actually Toby answered you back, Frank. He said, um, yes, listening back to myself on recordings or of gigs. So it was awesome. gig recordings, yeah. Okay. Um, listening is an overstated thing because everybody listens. Josh listened but he didn't know what to do with it or how to do it. I, I don't know too many people that play and just simply shut off the group. I don't think that's a reality. I think people don't know what to listen for and how. So when somebody says, well, I need you to listen more. You know, when you drive home today, I need you not to hit the car in front of you. <laughs> Thanks for the advice, Berlin, but uh, <laughs> that wasn't that obvious. I mean, you know, listening, I mean, sure, I'm listening. What does that mean? Uh, it means that there is an agreed upon, here we go, little experiment. You guys know ba 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 You know this song? Ba 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 Okay, I want everyone to clap with me. You ready? We'll wait for Josh to grab a chair. Bring me coffee. Only not for me. Why do I coffee? Clinic's over. Finally, no coffee. Huh? Yeah, si, si. Pero no vas a tomarlo, no? ¿Y por qué? ¿Quieres des quiere decir en público tu opinión de la Casa de los Estados Unidos? No, no. La gente va a estar ofendida. ¿No? ¿Puedo decir la verdad? Yeah. La verdad? You want to know what a foreign lady thinks about American coffee? <laughs> the worst coffee that I've ever had in my life. The worst coffee that I've ever had in my life. It's like water. I, I think we should lynch her. Mmm, that's great coffee. Now, <laughs> I do this at home and I get yelled at by that same foreign lady. 
Okay, what was I saying? I forgot. Oh, ba 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 ba. I want everyone to clap, okay? So it'll be ba 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 ba. Okay, here we go as a group. I'd like you all to join in. Ready? Ba 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 ba. 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 How'd you do that? How'd you do it? Because you all have a sense of time, you all listened and understood what it was you're supposed to do. And that's something that uh, Toby should consider. If everybody can go bop bop, can you do it bop 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 bop? You know, here, do you follow? This is the determinant spot because now you can do this to determine that you all have good time because at one, two, three, four, five, whatever number we have, 12, 15 people, 10. Uh, we all did it in time. You know where we didn't do it the best? Which one? Anyone remember? The slow one. Yeah, the slow one. Again. Isn't it interesting? You know? There you go, it's better, it's rehearsed. So you all have good time. You can't do that by accident. It's mathematically impossible. Follow? That's all my intern, uh, intent as a, as, a, as a teacher or a musician is to share. Your art is yours. You should play what you want, how you want, when you want, in any way you want, with no comment from me or anybody else. It's your art. And everybody that plays their instrument already plays with feeling. Maybe you don't play with the feeling that I like, or maybe I don't play with the feeling you like. But I don't know barely anybody that plays bass, you know, with no feeling. You follow what I'm saying? It's a bit of a self-induced, self-delusional thing. Everybody plays with some feeling because it's fun to play the bass. It's hard to see somebody getting up and I really have no feeling about this. And then here's a thing. I'll do sunshine and I'll do them two different ways. Actually, I'll, I'll trust you on this. Close your eyes. I'm going to do sunshine in, uh, I'm going to play the line four times. Da, 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 da. I'm going to play it two times with feeling and then the third time, second time with as little feeling as I can put into it. Okay? And I guess some argue, guy will argue and say, well, that's Berlin. He always sounds like it. But I, I gotta live with that. Here we go. Close your eyes and let me play, and I'm gonna do sunshine. One with as much feeling as I can provide, two, two times through, and then another two with no feeling. Here we go. Three, four. Well, give me a second. I gotta prepare which one I'm gonna do first. Okay, got it. Ready? <laughs> which one was with feeling and the other one the other one I did about as cold as I could and the other one I did with a with I guess as much enthusiasm as I could get for that line at this juncture in my life because it was it really determined I mean we except for the glisses could anyone honestly tell if I played with less uh, emotion or not really not and it sort of goes with that uh, term and again it's an incredibly misguided misleading term the base uh, education thing is filled with misguided points of view and this one is called dynamics bass players in general don't play with dynamics because the music doesn't require it bass players in general will play we don't play you know we don't you guys think about this in fact answer the question for me when you play do you ever change dynamics uh, ways you touch generally or dyna or, or, or volume or articulation elements do you do you okay I need a bass player to come up I, I'll take maybe I'm gonna learn something here today okay uh, I need a bass player <laughs> okay this is Frank again Frank again this is Dwayne Say and Frank again. <laughs> okay, play a bass line that you know, or play the Jocko line or something. Okay, play this line. 
and under your name. Create them, or are you playing as you would normally play? I determine my dynamics by what's going on around me. Okay. Always. All righty. Let's pick a, a thing that uh, you will affect that. Can you? Uh, um, well, I mean, that line can be an example, of course. See, what the thing is, I'm going to go with the first. In, uh, he said that line could be an example. I'm going to go with your first demonstration which, when I've mentioned this to other people before, have never demonstrated dynamics. Not saying they don't, not saying that I'm, I'm right about this. I'm saying is the initial thing that I heard was a non-dynamic line, and yet was still an excellently and appropriate for the music. So where, what you hear around you makes sense. So assuming that the drummer will play and then get soft and then get loud and do this, what music does that occur in, in your, uh, um, what songs do you do, or what? And anybody, where do you use dynamics? Anyone online? Anyone writing? Well, I get in verses when you, you know, the song's uh, singing a song in the verse, sometimes you come down yeah. a little lower chorus. So you would come down a little bit yeah. under a vocalist. Okay, that's fair. That is fair. Um, say again, please. At the flute solo and the Jeff Joe Tolson. Yeah. Coming, coming down. Bring the okay, under a Jethro Tull solo? All righty, I think that's fair. Now I have a question. The dynamics that are described are soft and loud. So I'll go back to the original thought and ask, what's the big deal about that? I mean, in the essence, when it is stated in education, if we're going to teach you dynamics and get you to dynamics, what's to teach? What is special about dynamics that even a self-taught bass player can't instantly understand the logic of that and respond. What I find is that, and, and I have to be careful here because I'm trying to be more positive and tell you what I do, but the problem for me is, is that, you know, that there's certain restaurants that cook this way and certain ones that cook this way and certain ones that cook this way. You know, you can't, just don't go eat there anymore if you don't like it. But what would you say if every restaurant cooked in the manner of McDonald's and told people that it was good for them. Just picture that idea that almost all culinary approaches are done where the food is not that good, but the chefs and the restaurants tout and tell you that it is. Then a guy will come along and say, well, wait a minute, this stuff isn't that healthy for you. Well, you've got an attitude. And you, uh, you know, you, there's lots of ways to cook. And there are. You can cook on the street if it gets hot enough. Is it a valid way to cook? The thing, are we timing? Well, we're almost at two hours and my phone's about to die. So okay. we just want to think about a good way to bring this all to a wonderful head. To a wonderful head. Oh, well, let me grab this. So it, it, I'll end it up with just a <laughs> thought. And so that's where I come from. The thing is, is that it isn't, you can grab it here. Frank, you're just great, man. Thank you. And his time was stellar, wasn't it? His time was just perfect. So the thing is, is that if it were a matter that in the old days we taught music, and then there would be that odd bird, or odd bird cello teacher who would you know, tell people to you know, do this before you start to practice the cello, the cello community would say, yeah, that's the way you know, Sklominski, whoever, would, would, would do it. It was no big deal. When an industry functions in a manner that is trusted and taught and supported that doesn't seem to associate with the self-taught or the musical paradigms, I'll say something about it and thus causes, I guess, whatever. But I know 
fear or problem with it because I, I'm not trying to insult or hurt. I'm just making people aware that the dynamic thing, if, if, if you teach a guy who doesn't know much about music by somebody who also doesn't know much about music, but there's a nice interaction, people are going to be happy. And bass players like to confuse happiness with musical success. Love this teacher. Was it great? Love it. Or I should stop this. I know I shouldn't go into this area. It's not nice, but I'm not trying to knock my colleagues. I'm saying is, is that being nice is not a criteria for your improvement. You would do better starting with a neutral guy who wasn't the nicest guy on earth, who showed you the greatest stuff you've ever heard. Hey, how you doing? Uh, Josh, yeah, it's great, yeah. Oh, hi, Jeff, how you doing? Oh, never mind, I'm, I'm not in the mood to talk. Let me see what you got. Ah, this Jeff's a jerk, isn't he? All right, let me hear you. Well, now what I want you to do is I want you to practice these lines in 12 keys, all right? All right, that'll be 10 bucks, okay, thanks a lot. Man, that Berlin, I I'll sure won't invite him over for Thanksgiving dinner, but holy mackerel, the guy's changing my musical life. This is intolerable to bass players, and that's what I'm going to end with. Don't seek from bass teachers anything more than what it is that is required for a bass teacher to provide. And since we determined that everyone has good time, you don't have to worry about groove. Do you know that groove isn't first but last in the paradigm of learning? Did you know that? Anyone didn't know that? You didn't know that? Would you come up for one second? I know the camera's gonna die. Okay. Come on up, what's your name? John. John, okay, grab this bass and, and tell me the name of the song uh, that you can play on the bass. Don't play it, but tell me the name. I'm gonna do this uh, in a manner and I want you to watch this. I'm not sure. Uh... Like a swing song. Okay. Yeah. B flat blues. <laughs> Alrighty, it, it's not a blues, but that's fair. I want you to do the same line in C sharp minor. trying to find a spot where you're not uh, uh, good at something. There's a reason for this. <laughs> it should be easy. Do, do, a, do a blues in C sharp minor 7 flat 5. Can you? Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I have to sabotage it with music, and flat that's, five. but I want you to watch this. Wait a second. Yes, take your time. And now watch this. This will work out fine if you give me a second on this. Uh. All right. There's a reason. You know why? Because you don't know the notes. I don't know the notes. So what comes first in a groove? The notes. Okay. Now, once you've learned the notes, learn that notes. Ba -ba -da -ba -ba -ba. Play a bass line in C sharp minor, J just those eight notes. Work it out. Flat five. Right on. Who said slow? Bravo. Bravo. Great call. And then that to perform because you don't yet you haven't yet learned the notes how can you groove on something you haven't yet internalized or understood right. so slow down tell me your name again John John D slow down and do it again is your camera still on now what's the flat five um, oh, sorry. that's okay that's a mistake is that a bad thing nope, nope.
that's just a mistake. But is what happened at first? A lot of hitches, a lot of problems, true? Because I came up with something that wasn't in his uh, vocabulary. Hence, I, he hit his wall. And you did it in public, and you're cool with it. Yeah. He played a line that he couldn't play, working out the notes for about two, three minutes. What's two, three minutes? And ultimately played bow, bing, boom, boom, bing, boom, which is what? It's a groove. Groove is last, it's not first. And once we understand that the more we understand about harmony or notes or where to place the fingers, ultimately it's all the same thing anyways. But I'll borrow the bass back, John. Thank you, you did a good job. Very good job. Everybody can groove if they know what they're doing. Everybody can groove if they know what they're doing. Groove is not a big deal, but it has become an overstated event. Generally, if you think about it and go back in your mind and look at all bass players, I would say, and at all styles, because art is not worthy of criti criti criticism or comments or anything, because that's art. Everybody learned in their own style, in their own way, and that's the individual, that's the subjectiveness of music. It's artistic, not academic. The, everyone learned how to groove, everybody. Every rocker uh, in their manner, in that cool thing that they do, every, you know, that, that sort of slightly sloppy Chris Squire. You know, it's a groove. Everybody grooves if they have demystified the instrument and the style they're going to play. Groove is not first, and the overemphasis that I've seen worldwide, worldwide, got a groove, don't forget the groove, absolutely the first thing, nonsense. Everybody can groove if you know what the notes are. And even that when Frank played, when he slowed it down, he could groove because he physically could do it. Everybody can move. This young lady can play a bit. Do you play an instrument, young lady? Would you come up here for one second? Oh, no. There you go. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> Only because he came. I don't think. <laughs> Only because he came. Only because he came. That's it. Oh, no. This is embarrassing. No, it isn't embarrassing oh, because I'm not going to, to offer you. Tell me your name. Melissa. Melissa, grab my chair, young lady. Oh, my God. I wouldn't do it for any of these ugly guys, but you can. <laughs> I will certainly. <laughs> You don't have to worry because I'm going to ask you to play a note. Yeah, I promise you this is going to be easy. You can either do it or you won't, or it'll work or it won't. But I think we're going to have a little surprise for everybody. <laughs> okay, have you ever heard of the Brandenburg Concerto? Okay, now, but I want to. Of course. Of course. <laughs> it's by that guy, Bill Brandenburg, who's my favorite German composer. Try this. I want you to play one note on the bass with your thumb, just one, like one note. That's a good note. And play it like, you know what Van Halen used to do? Boom, 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 boom. That's it, look at her head. Like, like. All right, I'm gonna stop you, and I'll tell you to pull back just a little bit. I know it's a little embarrassing. Your time is excellent. That's sort of what I wanted to show. Um, just play one note like you and I are in a band together. In fact, I'm going to be the, the finger tom tom player, and you're going to be the and you're going to be the bass player. One note, please. Boom. right there. How was their time? Come on. It was perfect. Thank you. Oh, we're just warming up here, pal. All right, go ahead, grab a chair. You did a beautiful job. Thank you. You did a beautiful job. Tell me your name again. Melissa. Melissa. Yes. Listen, did you get that on the air? The thing that I want to show you is, is that Melissa couldn't play more than one note at a time because she doesn't know the instrument but her time element is solid enough where you all saw it. Her, si her time was just about perfect. What
piece of something You've had four or five people up there, up here, and every last one of them played in time, did they not? And you all saw it on camera. Everybody played, once I kind of pulled them back and got them out of the performance mode, that Josh thing when he's ready to play, you know, you are so far from alone in that, so don't feel bad. You did a beautiful job, man, because all I said to Josh is pull back. And then a lot of guys do this when they're looking for music. I didn't mention that. It's here. It's here and 10, 15 minutes of this or half an hour and I'm done.